I'm calling this meeting of the City Town Council to order. Would you please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next item uh, on the agenda is uh, proclamations, and since May 31st through June the 3rd, 2017 is Wild Wild West Pro Rodeo Week, and the city would like to recognize this with a proclamation. Uh, Mr. Kevin Brown, president of the Southwest Horsemen's Association, will receive the proclamation. Whereas the Southwest Horsemen's Association and Pete Torres Classic Pro Rodeo will be presenting the first New Mexico Bank Wild Wild West Pro Rodeo in Silver City, New Mexico, and whereas the Wild Wild West Pro Rodeo is celebrating its 27th year in Grand County in 2017, and whereas the Wild Wild West Pro Rodeo reflects the Western heritage and history of Silver City. And whereas the Wild Wild West Pro Rodeo is an important step in the process of improving the economic viability of New Mexico in the sporting world. Now therefore, I, Ken Latter, Mayor of the Town of Silver City, Grand County, New Mexico, in view of the inherent value of this, do hereby proclaim the week of May 31st through June 3rd, 2017, as the first New Mexico Bank Wild Wild West Pro Rodeo Week, and urge all citizens to attend and enjoy, and enjoy the rodeo. Mr. Brown, would you like to say a few words? Oh, no, I, I sure. Go right ahead. Well, my name is Kevin Brown. I'm the president of the Southwest Horsemen's Association. Um, here tonight to receive this proclamation from Mayor Ladner and the counselors, and thank you. Um, once again, this year we're bringing Southwest Horsemen, bringing the uh, Wild Wild West Pro Rodeo to Silver City. We want to be sure and invite everybody out and make sure that the word gets out to come and, and um, have fun and, and watch and enjoy the rodeo. Um, this is our 27th year, and I think um, I think it's important to realize that you know we're not able to do this without people volunteering their time to do that. But more importantly, too, the sponsors that we have in this town that come to our aid to help us. First and foremost is First New Mexico Bank of here in Silver City, who is our title sponsor this year. And without the support of them and many other sponsors, you know, we wouldn't be able to bring this event. And it's a, it's a quality pro rodeo event that brings the, the top name competitors from across the nation. And you'll see a lot of these same named event, uh, same named, um, competitors riding in the national finals rodeo in Las Vegas at the end of the year for world titles. So th this is a world-class event held here in our local town to celebrate some of the rich culture that, you know, was part of the founding influence of this area. And I just, with that, I want to say thank you and, and come out to the rodeo. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is public input, and we have uh, three people that signed up. First was uh, Paul Hotback. Paul, you want to come up? And... Mayor and council members, uh, my name is Paul Hutfit. I'm the project manager for the 2017 Southwest Festival of the Written Word, and this is uh, uh, 
our third major festival. We have a major festival in the odd numbered years, and then we have some smaller events during the even number of years. We call it the prologue years. Um, the Southwest Festival for the, of the Written Word attracts hundreds of visitors to Silver City, and we fill up hotel rooms. We get business over to the coffee shops and restaurants, and we pay our writers and presenters, whether they're from Albuquerque or from Silver City. We're, I'm very proud to say that we, we pay the artists. Um, so we do have a special permit this year. Our festival is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, September 20th. 20, excuse me, 29th, 30th, and October 1st. Uh, the events are held throughout downtown at locations such as uh, uh, Javelina Coffee Shop, uh, Seed Boat Gallery, and uh, Old Elks Lodge, uh, the Silver City Library, and we have an opening reception at Lay Hall. Um, I, this is my first appearance uh, before the council, and I read the mission statement. Uh, of the town of Silver City, and our activities are totally congruent with what your mission is. So I'm very proud of that. I'm a I vacationed here for a couple decades, and I've only been here for four years. But I'm really proud to be a citizen of Silver City, and uh, thank you for for uh, for the work you do, and, and hope you can come out and enjoy the, the festival this year at the end of September. So. Thank you. Next is uh, Charlotte McCloskey. M-C-G-O-Y. Oh, okay. No one's ever guessed it. Hello, council members and mayor and staff and press. So I am here tonight as a parent and as a community member and really as a very committed community member. Um, I've been here for 22 years. I was on the school board and also on planning and zoning in the past. And what I'm here to mention tonight is that you may have heard recently that there was a discussion, um, actually at a, an attempt to pass a four-day school week for the public schools. Cobre already had passed that uh, for their um, starting this fall. And I read the press uh, releases about this, and I also attended one of the two meetings. And it appeared to me that it gave all of the pros and what a great idea it was. And all these people are in favor of it. And I wanted to speak up, even though this isn't a school board meeting, about what could happen to the kids who don't perform well, the kids who might be low income. We are already, we buy for 49th, 48th, 50th in the state in education. So we have kids that I consider at risk, and I want the best possible for them. And the problem with the four-day school week is those are the kids that would be at risk. Those are the kids that could fall behind. They're already behind. Kids that are doing great, sure, they have a great time with the four-day week. Parents that don't work five days, they'd have a great time. Poor families that have to come up with child care, kids on the street, kids home without a parent. There's no provision made for uh, that Friday to have activities and educational enrichment or tutoring for the children that would not receive it. And because these children are the future of our city, I just felt that I wanted to bring it to you as something to be aware of because I believe it will be brought up again next year. And I also want to say I totally support the Silver School Districts. I wish they could do a four-day week and it couldn't possibly uh, negatively influence our children. I would love the teachers to have a four-day school week. I would love to have a four-day week. I'm sure all of us would love to have a four-day week. And I hate that there has to be something against something to, uh, there has to be two sides of an issue to me. I would hope that we could help the school somehow and, and get the state to support public education more so that instead of coming before Silver City and saying, we're worried about that we might have to go to a four-day school week. We might be saying, you know, what can we do to help our at-risk children? What more programs can we offer? What can we do to improve the situation for our children and families? So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Thank you. Sissy uh, McAndrews. Hello, Mayor, Council, Staff press and community. 
Um, I'm here this evening, as you know, I work in historic downtown Silver City, and we've been having some real challenges lately. Um, I just want to say that uh, I'm, I'm very pleased. Uh, the mayor has come by several times to talk to me directly. Uh, Julie Stir uh, Stir Steenman, or Steenport, uh, our code enforcement officer, has been doing a wonderful job, and also the police force. Um, I have the department on uh, speed dial, the dispatch on speed dial, and they've been showing up, they've been taking care of the issues. Um, but one of my real concerns is how many resources we're spending for not only ongoing but repetitive problems. Um, I don't want to bring them up at this point, but I think it's something that uh, we have other community members and I'm trying to get them to also make calls so I don't want to be the only one. But right now I want you to know that I think uh, the city departments are doing all they can for the situation that we've got. Um, it, uh, the other night I felt threatened enough that I actually had to call for a police escort uh, to get me back over to my vehicle. So we've got some ongoing problems down there, and as I've told the mayor, uh, I just want to see what I can do to help work towards solutions to this. I feel the staff and police department are trying, uh, but we've got an ongoing problem that we need to address. Okay? Thank you. Next item on the agenda is council comments. Uh, Council Lacano. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to have a couple of things. Um, this past week, I spent some time at Golf Park with a, a group of community members repainting um, what is known as their Orgullo Chicano mural. Uh, it's the mural that's been in the park for 23 years now, and um, I was a part of the original group that painted that as a student at some when I was in Silver High School. So um, it was really a, a great thing to go back and to do that again, and I just wanted to thank the town for all of their support in getting that d accomplished again. Um, and then the other thing is that for anyone who <laughs> may have not heard me say this already, um, the Beatles are coming. And by the Beatles, I mean the only New Mexico tribute band in, um, in existence. And they will be performing at the Fine Arts Auditorium on May 20th from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock. They do a three-hour performance that involves um, the whole gamut of, of Beatles music. And it's um, a fundraiser for the Silver City Museum Society. Uh, they're working on a capital campaign right now to replace place um, some of the roofs that are in poor, poor shape. So if you would be willing to be a part of that, you can get a ticket for $10 at the Silver City Museum or at, for $15 at the door. So thank you. Thank you. Councilor Ray? Thank you, Mayor. No comment. Councilor Amon Smith? Thank you. I will take up Councilor Ray's time. I, uh, I'm really happy to... Uh, say in public here that the New, Mar New Mexico Department of Transportation Transportation Alternatives Program has awarded uh, a grant to the town of Silver City. Thank you to Alex Brown, to Peter Penny, and to Denise Smith. This is for, as part of the bicycle master plan. This was the first priority project on the bicycle master plan. So we're going to have restriping a road diet and bike lanes put in on a, on a couple of streets, uh, 12, one up to 12th Street and in that neighborhood. I'm very, very happy to start uh, doing that work. And I know there's other grants coming. Um, so thank you. Thank you to those folks who worked so hard on that. I want to say that we had a, a conversation at the Green Drinks last Thursday uh, with a gentleman who was uh, surprised that in his lo the large organization in which he works that there were no bins for recycling in the cafeteria. So uh, the town of, of the town's Office of Sustainability offered him to come and pick up some of the old small bins that we had that he could put in the cafeteria there. So I want to say that they have a stack of those bins that would be perfect for like a church kitchen or a school cafeteria or something like that if folks wanted to use them to collect things and then put them in the larger green carts. 
And I hope that that's okay. I was sure, told that they had a big staff of them over there, so I think that is okay. I think the phone was the phone was so that, you know, if your organization is not doing recycling, talk with the leadership and get them going. The more that we recycle, the less we fill up the landfill, and the long term, the better it is for all of us. I want to also uh, reflect a little bit on what we talked about at our last town meeting about volunteering for town committees. I noticed that we had an announcement that we had two openings on the Planning and Zoning Commission, which is a real decision-making committee. It also acts as an advisory group, but there, that two vacancies is a lot off of that commission. That committee does important work that impacts citizens' lives every time that a land you know use zone coding thing comes up so consider applying for that committee and um, if you're thinking well i'm perfectly happy with land zone uh, you know decisions i want to also put a pitch in for uh, county uh, things that go on for example i know that there are two members open at the regional the Gila regional medical center board of trustees and so if you've been thinking gosh the hospital is really important and i don't know about the decisions they've been making there's openings there so volunteering on real decision making boards is a really important thing to do in our community and that's all i have to say thank you councilor Rosen. No, co <coughs> no comment. Tired. Yeah. Okay, does the council have any other comments? Uh, a couple of Fridays ago, uh, I had the opportunity to welcome a fairly large group of people to Silver City during the opening exercises of uh, Continental Divide Trail Days. And the chair of that committee uh, gave me this plaque in appreciation to what the city has done to help them and I'd like to give this to Alex so that he can hang it in City Hall with the others. That's great. It's very beautiful, yeah. By, by the way, that was uh, created by Sister Jutile. Okay. Um, Next on the agenda is changes to the agenda. Uh, any changes? Okay. Next item is approval of minutes of the April 25th, 2017 regular meeting. Councillor Eamon Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for recognizing my gesture. I'd like, I, I would like to move to approve the minutes of the regular council meeting of the town of Silver City of April 25th, 2017. Is there a second? Councilor Bettison. I second the motion. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. Mr. Brown, when I spoke with you earlier, you, uh, you indicated that you didn't have any staff reports. I wondered, would you mind just giving a brief report on where we are with the uh, four-way stop on Broadway and Bullard and also with the uh, the stop letters that we're going to place on the street that don't wear away with traffic? Yeah, all of that has been uh, uh, ordered. Uh, we have a stop ahead uh, that we're going to, that we've ordered for the four-way stop sign at, stop at Bullard and Broadway, and then we have the stop letters. Th these are all the vinyl ones that are melted onto the road rather than the, the uh, uh, paint that wears, wears fairly quickly. Uh, so we've ordered it for, for both intersections, and uh, so we should have those here in a couple weeks, and then we can turn it into four-way stop. Okay. Well, I think you said you were going to paint the crosswalks, too, and down. Uh, the co crosswalks will be, I talked to Peter today, the crosswalks are going to be repainted on, on Friday. Okay, great. Thank you. Next item on the agenda requiring action is new business. Uh, item 11A is the approval slash disapproval of endorsement of Councilor Bettiston's candidacy for the position of Vice President of the New Mexico Municipal League. Councilor Bettiston. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I currently serve as the New Mexico Municipal League Treasurer 
thanks to the endorsement um, of the council. And um, the next, the, the service and officer positions are one year term. So the next one in the progression is vice president. And um, I would hope that uh, the council would do as they have in the past and uh, unanimously endorse me to uh, seek that position. Um, it's critical to have endorsement and support of a town council when you're running for any position on the board, but especially for officer positions. And um, I know that I continue to do my best to represent not only the broader uh, New Mexico communities, the 170 powers that we have, but also some of the interests that we have that are particularly different, but also sometimes aligned with other communities, and uh, making sure that we all have a voice at the table. And um, did do so uh, during the, the session um, with the help of our town clerk Ann Mackey, who uh, was called in to assist in all of you when uh, we had that uh, little thing called uh, the Consolidation of Elections, mm -hmm. the, the new uh, Local Election Act. So um, I've been really active, as you can see from the email that I sent, and I hope I ask for your endorsement to uh, run for this position. Thank you. Are there any questions uh, for Councilor Bettisman? Do I hear a motion? Yes. Councilor Amon Smith? Yes, Mr. Mayor. I would like to move that the council endorse Councilor Bettison for the position of Vice President at the New Mexico Municipal League. Okay. Is there a second? Councilor Ray? <laughs> yes, sir. I'll second it most of it. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor of endorsing Councilor Bettiston's candidacy for the position of Vice President of the New Mexico Municipal League, say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Good luck to you, and by the way, thank you for the good job you've been doing with the Treasurer's position. Thank you, Mayor, and I hope you the Council. I'm very honored. Uh, once again, you've endorsed me, so thank okay. you. Agenda item B, item 11B, is a <clears throat> continued budget discussion for the physical, physical, fiscal year 2017-18, and uh, I'd like to handle this agenda item in the same manner as I did the last council meeting. We will dispense with addressing the chair with every question, and we'll talk to each other directly and with Mr. Brown. We'll have a just a regular discussion. So, Mr. Brown, would you lead us off? Okay, Mayor Council. Um, there's basically no changes, um, but I said I was going to keep bringing this to you every week until um, we have to submit the budget uh, at the end of May. Um, the last discussion will be on May 23rd when we have our next council meeting. Uh, per our previous discussions, we talked about uh, increasing property tax by one mil to offset any cuts that, that may occur during this next fiscal year. I've been speaking with uh, the assessor, Raul Durieta, about that uh, because I was wondering if what the deadline was for us to pass it. Um, <clears throat> the deadline is May 31st. So if we don't do it in May, we have, we're done for a year. Uh, we'll be put uh, one step close, one step deeper in the hole if they speed up the hold harmless or they eliminate the hold harmless. Um, as you know, uh, the hold harmless gross receipts taxes, we cannot pass any increments until January and um, not really any, realize any revenue from those increments until March of next year. So we will only realize one third, around $300,000 of what we, we could if the max is what we, we could get is about 300000 uh, by uh, passing one mill, uh, we could impose, we could generate about two hundred thousand dollars. But I wanted to, to have uh, Mr. Turieta talk about what it takes to what goes into the uh, uh, calculating what we can get from the tax and what our total authority is. Mr. Chair, uh, Mayor and Council, my name is Raul Torrieta, your Grand County Assessor, and uh, actually when uh, I've been talking to Alex for the last uh, 
a couple times within this last week. So the statute is under Section 737-B3, and that's authorizing the maximum operating mill levy of 7.65 for the municipalities. Silver City is currently at 3.825 and has a remaining authority at 3.825. They can impose the remaining authority at once. The increment is decided by if you don't go the above 7.65. So the government body for increasing the mill levy hopefully by June 1st, because we actually certify by June 15th with all our valuation through the whole county. Uh, one thing that we need, really need to talk about is that uh, once you impose this one mill, uh, I gave you a, a document about the uh, tax rate authorities and limitations and how it's all done. And also, uh, talking to Alex, there's something called the yield control formula. Once the yield control formula is in effect, you can't increase property taxes more than 5% 5, 5 and it actually fluctuates the mill rate. And that's one of the reasons that I talked to Alex, you're not actually going to get the full mill. Once we run the formula, it's going to give you probably a half of a mill, maybe a little bit above half of a mill. So once uh, I run the formulas on that, we will find out exactly. We haven't done any valuation assessments on it, but I will on the next budget to tell you exactly how much is going to increase in property taxes. And actually, for the half a mill, it won't be all that much. So I'll break it down like I did with the with the four mills on a hundred thousand dollar home, hundred fifty thousand dollar home, fifty thousand dollar home. And I can give you a complete breakdown on that come the end of uh, uh, May for the uh, the next meeting. And I do stand for questions. So I'm going to direct it to kind of, to, I'm sorry, to both of you. Um, I guess the question is, so we were calculating based on one mil. It sounds like we're only going to get half a mil if we... Actually, the number, the two hundred thousand dollars that I came up with, yeah. was based on when we when we uh, increased property tax about yeah. three four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, um, I didn't speak with. Uh, were you the assessor? No, 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 I didn't speak no. with the assessor at that time. So what we did was we passed a resolution increasing the property tax by one mil. But once it went to DFA, they amended it to what to fit into the yield control and the amount was approximately a little over two hundred thousand dollars that we did generate at that time from the the one mill i assume it's going to be a little bit more this time because the valuations are higher and and things like that so that's why i, I was a little bit cautious in saying it was two hundred thousand dollars because we received over two hundred thousand the last time we did a, a mill uh, per se. Right, uh, and I remember that. And and that's why I was just trying to figure out if it was directly related to one mill or if it was, to, you know, by portion. Yeah, there, I've like, like uh, Mr. Turrieta had said, I guess the, ultimately it sounds like we're going to have to do this either at the next meeting to get ahead of the game or we're going to have to have a special meeting. Well, I, I mean, yeah. Um, it's either on the 23rd or on the 31st. Um, I don't know that we'll co totally understand what's come of the special session. Mm -hmm. Well, it's that day, isn't it? The 24th. Uh, so well, it's 24th. on the 24th, but, but once we evaluate the bills and how it how it affects us, mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know that we will be able, we will have a definite answer. So, I, I you know I'm looking to err on the side of caution. You know the question I didn't ask you is that. If we didn't need it and the council didn't want this mill, could we uh, rescind, it? rescind it next year? Well, you can actually, uh, you have until the 15th of June. Okay. So, so we could pass it on May 23rd that's, that's and rescind question. it by... Uh, See, once we, once we certify it, it has to be done until the 15th of June. And you can, they don't set the rates until uh, possibly in September. And, yeah, you can actually have that window of opportunity. Okay. So so we do, this way we can be cautious on the 23rd and pass it. And then it will give us time to evaluate what's happened during the session and see if we need it or not. I like the fact that we can resend it if necessary. So, and Mayor, that, with that deadline. Mayor and Council, I will contact you for the first thing in the morning without, you know, to make sure about the 15th of June. But uh, a lot of times whenever the certification process is through the, the 15th of June. Okay. 
but I will come up with a definite answer to um, Alex Brown first day in the morning. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Yeah, go right ahead. You don't need to. Oh, I don't have to. All right. So used to being formal. Uh, first, just a comment, which is that my understanding is that the governor has called a special session, and therefore she is sort of establishing the agenda. And she has four things on the agenda. The budget, in my prediction, is not going to be the first one that she wants to address. So I think it will be a little while before we really have a sense of what's going to be happening in Santa Fe. Um, and I just want to express on my ignorance here, can we only levy in increments of one mil, or can we do uh, decimal increments? Uh, we can actually do decimal as long as it does not increase over 3.825. Okay. It doesn't have to be a mill, it could be a half a mill up to 3.825 mills. Okay. And, and that's why we're working with yield control to figure out exactly what the yield control number would be. Would be. So that way by the 23rd we could have the actual number, the max number we could get for the 5% yield control on the resolution. Right. So we don't say we're going to pass a mill and they actually be, I think last time it was point like six three or point six something Not that actually resulted. Okay, something like that. Good. And, uh, uh, question, cause, you know, uh, Mayor, uh, uh, Council uh, Smith, actually, uh, right now we're actually figuring out all our numbers on the protest period. What happens there is you actually have a value. If they protest the value, we have to extract that value on the protest due to the fact that you know, if we do win the protest, that value goes back into the system. And uh, I won't have those numbers down until possibly Tuesday of next week. And that's one of the reasons that I had to hell up to give you the exact number on exactly what's going to be brought into the town of Storch City. And once again, uh, like uh, Mr. Brown stated, uh, I am capping out the 3% for the residential side, so that's going to increase value in the one-in district. Okay, so, so that's how we're going to proceed is, is bring that to you at the next council meeting. Hopefully we won't need it in, in later in the month, but if not, to err on the side of caution. Okay, and and so thank you very much for your help, and I'll be Anything I'll talking. Else you on that? Amanda. Okay, and then the other, the only other thing I wanted to give you some more up-to-date numbers on lodges tax. Um, if you look at the lodges tax budget, uh, it's the dark, the dark column, tw fiscal 2018. Uh, I'm looking. I only uh, decreased uh, revenues by uh, uh, three percent uh, from last year. Um, I. That's, I don't think we're going to realize that, but I was cautious in the fact that if you go to uh, page, the second page, there, if you look near the bottom, it says building and structures. If you go, go along there, I put, I budgeted $30,000 in expenditures there. So what, basically, what the intent of what I was doing was, is basically um, budgeting expenditures that I won't spend unless we realize the revenue. And what I can do is I can actually transfer the money into somewhere where we can actually allocate the funds. So say, for instance, at the middle of the year, where we actually realize that we're we're on target with what we actually budget, I can transfer the money to somewhere where we could spend it on advertising and I can bring it to the council and let you guys decide what you want to do with it. Okay. So we don't have to do a budget adjustment to, to actually uh, add that to the budget. So, so that's the approach I'm taking on this. So uh, I'm, I'm still being cautious even though it doesn't really look, look it, so I, I want to show you that line again. So that 35000 actually brings it down to 9%. Regarding the mill levy of whatever, you know, up to 1%, but most likely a fraction. I keep forgetting to turn the thing on. Um, sorry. Um, most likely a fraction of that, not necessarily a full 1%, which is actually uh, a good thing. Um, but are, we, are you still in this budget, like what you presented, the, the two times before, talking about... Um, not providing or the raises 
That's that still the savings is still in there. Yes. Okay. And 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 the unions have been notified. They've been notified. Um, you know, they all know also that really until July one, uh, things can change. Right. I mean because. Uh, you know, our beginning cash balance ends up being higher because we end up getting a lot more revenue from proceeds taxes than than we received last year or something. Um, the governor, things change with the state. Uh, there's a lot of things, and because I actually had negotiations with uh, the police department, they were notified, but every year we're supposed to have negotiations mm -hmm. in April with them and the fire and stuff. So, uh, and asked me if, if they if they request it. And uh, they did. The, the police did request it, and we decided that I can't give them accurate information. We can't make a decision on complete decision on that at this point with them. But with the, I did tell them with the town council, this is how we're proceeding to be safe. This is how we're moving. Uh, so if if nothing changes at the state, if it. If they start cutting more, we're going to have to actually cut into budgets. Um, if it stays the same, or we realize better revenues, and or the governor and the state actually fixes the hold on the situation, which I doubt, then we can we can do the raises. Um, it's just you know, I don't want to say completely no at this point when there may be a possibility of actually being able to afford it. And then. Have, have. I'm, I'm sure you did because I think we requested you've prepared the directors of the departments for the fact that we don't know what's going to happen. Yes, I've been talking to them all and, and they all know what's coming down. Okay. I've you know I meet with the big departments daily, and, and right. so they know. And then I meet with the smaller departments uh, on a weekly basis, so they they've been well aware of. In fact, with specifically with the smaller departments, they're very well aware because that's the more majority of our discussions. Okay. Well, it, I was going to say it's not part of the budget, but um, if I may, the, the second meeting may. Could you please bring our new uh, chief of the fire chief? Yeah. It would be nice to to have him introduced as the fire chief. Yes. Great. He's, barely, he's barely trying to get his feet wet, so he's been very, very busy. Uh, so, thank you. Okay, thank you. Agenda item 11C is appointment to the cemetery board. Uh, Mr. Jeff Bell, who is the current chair of the cemetery board, is had a, had a, his term will expire this May 31st. And he has uh, reapplied to continue to serve on the board. If there are no objections, I would like to so appoint him. Any any objections from the council? Mr. Fell is so appointed to the cemetery board. Councilor Bettison. Uh, is it improper, uh, Mr. Skybron, if we step back for a minute to the budget and talk about the little? Fact sheet that's kind of in draft form. No problem. Okay, Mr. Mayor, can we do that? Sure. Thank you. And the letter. The what? The letter that the mayor and I. Yeah, I think the letter should be discussed too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, I, I guess uh, I I just want to make sure that you know, um, with Alex's help, a great amount of help, we put this together. Um, and and I know uh, Alex and I have been going back and forth to use, through Ian since when I was out of town. But I think that if anyone has any sort of suggested structural changes or changes to kind of how we're trying to present it, um, I, I think that would be, I mean, it's open. It's not set in stone yet, right? Okay, so it's really a draft. And I, I think the council should, it would be good to, to make sure that it's as clear as possible because sometimes I don't really word things very well. Um, so um, I'm hoping that we can get this out um, sooner rather than later after there's been some sort of consensus that it's okay the way it is or that the additions need to be made. 
Well, you can't do the consensus part. It's not no. an action item on the agenda. No, no, no. I'm not doing it right now. I said that at some point that we get a consensus on it, which would be probably at the next meeting. I'm not asking for consensus now. I'm asking for folks to, to for the council members to comment on it and to let Alex know. Okay. That's just, that's all. You're right. Do you understand it? I mean, because if you, you get too far into it, it, it make it too complicated, give too much information. People start not understanding what they're looking at. And um, that's, that's my biggest fear. It's the same thing. We, we did put the letter today, and it went out to the legislature, and it ended up two pages originally. So we had to cut it down, uh, the mayor and I, to, to one page so that we don't they don't see two pages and start, oh, just throw it in the garbage. Uh, okay. <laughs> sure, Councilor. Well, this document the letter is really good. Mm -hmm. Really good. Mm -hmm. really good. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, I mean, I'll, I'll make some comments to you, Alex, about the fact sheet. It makes you think hard to try to summarize into just one page, doesn't it? And the only thing is, I think that header that says, if you do this, it will kill us, would be good. Or if you do this, it would, like, break our legs, would be good. <laughs> that's what I'll, <laughs> I'll talk to you about that. Thank you. Thanks, you all, for all the work. Oh, well, thank you. Well, I think this concludes the business of the town of Silver City. Do I hear a motion? <laughs> Councilor Bettison? I move to adjourn. Is there a second? I second the motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Meeting is adjourned.